Hi everyone, I have been asked to um, colour this picture from, it is um, Millie Marotta's Wildlife Wonders. Now, this is a compilation book, so I'm not sure which of her books this one comes from. Um, I do have a list of the animals in this book. Obviously these are um, seahorses. I'm just having a look to see if they've got a specific name. No, just says seahorses. Sometimes she puts the sort of specific breed if there are different types. But I decided to use my Black Widow pencils with this purely because they're a lot of tiny details. And uh, these sharpen up nicely. So that would seem to be a good choice. So I'm just going to open up the pencils if they allow me. And now I've got the spider set and the cobra set. And I thought I would maybe concentrate to start with just on one of the seahorses. So I'm just making room for my pencils. Because they are, I'm just checking I'm right, yes, they are symmetrical. I thought if I just did one, and then you could follow the video again and do the other one the same. Or you could reverse it slightly, do it differently. You know, it's up to you. I just thought it would be easier to just do the ones. I'm going to zoom in a, a lot <laughs> so we can see, you can see all the little details and we will make a start on the sort of head face. Now the eye, to start with I'm thinking the centre of the eye, I like to do black. Um, I don't always like to start with black because it can smudge but the Black Widows are pretty good. And the Black Widow from the original spider set, the black, is a nice pure dark black. So I'm going to do the eye, just the centre. And you could do the same with the other eye on the other one now, if you want. So what you could do is follow me along and sort of pause and do both as you go. It's up to you. Now the outside of the eye, this part here, is often white but slightly shiny in um, in sea creatures and so I'm going to use the spider web I've got some other greys in the cobra but they're a bit browny this one is more um, sort of blacky grey if that makes sense and I'm going to put a little bit of colour now I do this a lot you may see me do it before so what I want to do is put a fair bit of colour on the side there and fade it towards the top and bottom leaving some blank and the white that I've left helps to create a slightly shiny look. Hopefully you can see that. If you want it to really shine, you can always go over the eye. Now I see people do this. Um, they use um, something called, I'm trying to think of the name. Sorry, I'm just flicking through a book to write something down while I'm talking to you. Um, um, glossy Accents. Um, it is like something you would apply right at the end, sorry, and it just adds a glossy look to the page and people do it maybe all over everything, particularly for um, um, sea creatures and things because they might be scaly or shiny, that sort of thing. But um, I'm just going to pick out some colours while I'm nattering and they sort of, um, yeah, they just add that on and it gives a sort of fun glossy look. Hmm. I think we're going to actually end up just using the um, normal Black Widows, the spider set. So I've got the toadstool, the cyanide pink and the egg yolk and I'm going to do a bit of a graduation of colour between pink, sort of peach, which a toadstool almost is, um, is the nearest I've got, and yellowy orange. I might want a paler yellow. Actually I think I'm going to use the banana. So those three and just have a play around and see where we go. I think hopefully it'll work. Um, I've done it with um, other pencils, I'm trying to think. And uh, so anyway, we'll see. I'm going to use the cyanide pink around the edge of the face. So I'm going to concentrate just on this area here first. I'm not going to worry about any of this yet. Okay, and I'm going to start quite gently. I want this to be, it to be slightly darker on the edge of the... Uh, Mr. Seahorse and then sort of fade it down a bit and we'll then mix in 
the other colours. Now you could, yes, it's the Stedler that I've done this with. So if you were using Stedler Ergosoft, you could use um, the um, the pink, not the um, magenta -y pink, the sort of light pink. And then you could use, there's a peachy colour in there and a yellow. Or um, you can do this with any set of pencils, doesn't have to be these. So, you know, if I was doing it with, um, let's say, um, polychromos, I would probably use the rose mm, pink carmine, probably the pink carmine, or the, yeah, maybe. And then we don't really have a peachy colour though, do we? And maybe this one of the fleshy colours, light flesh, none of, one of the lighter yellows maybe. I'm just trying to add a little bit more in just so that it can sort of blend into the next colour. So I'm just doing a light layer. You can always come back in. I'm trying not to get any pink on the eye but I probably will. But hey, I'm not going to stress. Toadstool next. <clears throat> I'm going to go down. I'm going to go over some of this pink, the lighter bits of pink bring this in and I think sometimes it's just fun to mix up some colors now I obviously haven't looked up what this um, this seahorse is supposed to look like what colors he is um, because it just did say just seahorse on Millie's list it didn't tell us the specific one I mean she may have just sort of merged a few I don't know if she always copies a picture or whether she sometimes uses her imagination a bit more like Johanna Basford does I don't know lots about Millie uh, Marotta I'm sort of fairly new to her books really but anyway um so I'm not sure but uh, I just fancied trying something a little bit different. I thought it might look fun and pretty, hopefully. <laughs> now I'm going in with my banana colour, which is the last one. I'm going to go in the centre of the this bit. What is this called, this bit? I don't know. It's quite dark, the banana. I probably went a bit too dark there. I'm going to keep it. try and keep it a little bit lighter here. And down here. I'm going to sneeze. I think I'll be alright. Now I'm going to go, that's quite dark enough that yellow, but I'm going to go back in with my toadstool. If I can show you. Here we go. Oh, catch the light. There we are. And uh, just darken that up a little. I don't want it looking really orange, but I think it, it's a nice transition colour between the yellow and pink. And we can um, try to think about what I'm doing with the rest. I haven't really thought it all through. <laughs> Never mind. I think this is working quite nicely. Just trying to make sure it sort of blends into all the pink. It's nice to just keep working at it until you feel happy that it's uh, that the colours are working. Just tipping my head to the side because my light is shining off. I turned my light up quite brightly today. I don't know if it's a bit over bright. Now I don't want this really dark, but I just want to make sure it blends in and that we can see there's two different colours. Sorry, that's my arm nodding my tin. I hope I didn't make you jump. Ah, there's a little face. Now we have a, I sort of want to split his body into pieces. Gosh, that sounds really wrong. I don't want to split his body into pieces. <laughs> I want to colour it in sections. <laughs> so we have, we have the sort of fin part, which is quite different to the rest. We have this sort of spiny part, which leads to the tail. And then we have the tummy. However, I split them into those three sections and then maybe keep with these colors i'm thinking because i'm really liking that but switch them about so here where it's near the face maybe we'll do um hmm so we could do yellow on the outside of some and pink in the middle and then switch it over um what should we do for the tum 
I'm just thinking we could carry on with the pink down here from here or we could change it up with the yellow um, Mm, I think we'll carry on with the pink on this bit. So I'm going to leave it zoomed out now because there's a lot to see. I'll just see if I can... And my light is pulled over. Hopefully you can see okay. And just do what I did with the face, which you saw in close. So make a darker, more layered area here. Now you notice I'm ignoring the detailing. Sometimes on Millie's pictures I, I um, want to sort of take notice of that and fill it all in. Um, I think I did that with the starfish in her um, Secrets of the Sea. That's the book. <laughs> but um, sometimes um, I sort of like to just ignore it and let it shine through the colouring. I'm not colouring hard so that it disappears or whiting it out or anything like that. I still want it to be present, but I'm just not incorporating it. But what you could do with this, if you wanted to sort of copy this design, you could, if you want to highlight these lines and bits more, is you could take a, um, uh, a glitter pen, um, maybe in the colours that we've been using, or you've been using, or maybe in just a, um, I've got one which is just like, um, it's almost like glitter glue, so there's no gel in there that's coloured, it's see-through, so it just makes things shine, so you could just go over this, the lines and sh to make them shine, it would be quite pretty, um, I'm probably not going to do that, there's quite a lot, <laughs> so I think by the time I finished colouring it, I'll probably be happy without having shine in it. So, there. And we'll sort of incorporate this bit into here. I wasn't quite sure whether this is like a fin or whether it's just, but I don't think it matters. We'll just sort of incorporate it in. So there's our basic outline. And then back in as we did before with the toadstool. You probably can't see. And uh, slightly overlap the uh, cyanide pink. Now I'm not always very keen on the cyanide pink. It's a little bit brash and harsh for me, um, but I think used gently and then muddled in with these other colours, I think it's nice. So it's just the right shade for what I'm doing. So, uh, and I know um, actually I've had um, people asking me if I can show how to just mix up different colours a little bit more because I tend to just stick with say three blues or whatever, three pinks, so mixing different colours. I think the key is to layer it up, start light and use colours that transition well. Um, so trying to get from, let's say, if you just had a yellow and a red, that's quite tricky. It's possible, but it's tricky. Um, or if you were going for like purple to yellow, that would be really tricky. So just think about which colours naturally go together and that should help you. I'm just doing a lighter layer now to just bring this in a bit. Maybe just on the tum where he pops out his little rounded tummy. And then I'm going to now I'm going to try and be a bit lighter with this, although actually it doesn't look too brash. I'm going to start here because down here we don't really need it. I'm just going to do a light there, I think, across. And then um, I think it's better to start with light layer and then you can darken it up. It's harder to erase. I say this a lot. But, uh, I certainly find it to be the case. So I've had a lot of new subscribers lately, which has been really lovely. So I just want to say thank you to anyone that's pretty new and has subscribed. That's, I really appreciate it. Um, subscribing makes a big difference, and I'll sort of explain why. Because um, YouTube, um, if your channel is sort of popular, they're more likely to show it to other people. So obviously that has advantages for me because more people watch my videos and, uh, you know, the ad revenue goes up, which is always lovely, of course. It means I can sort of buy more bits and pieces to show you. But also, like, the aim of my channel has always been 
to provide um, some help, encouragement um, for people colouring to try to um, show how relaxing and fun it can be because I just want to help people be more relaxed um, in their life. Um, you know, I know lots of us have stress, all of us have stress. But it's really important to just find a way to wind down and relax. And that's what I'm trying to do all the time um, with my videos. Although I'm sort of trying to teach you things, I'm obviously I'm not a big expert. I have been colouring for a long time, but I have not had any official training or anything. I learnt from books and other videos and just experimentation, really, and, and looking at other people's pictures. So sorry, I'm on the toadstool now, just going over and over, just darking up really. So I don't feel like I'm sort of the wisest teacher out there, but I try and keep things simple because I know that when we're a beginner, um, it can be quite daunting and off-putting if we see these amazing pieces of art and we think, there's just no way I can do that, so I might as well give in now. No! Please, I don't want people to think that. I want to show people techniques which aren't too difficult, which can give you a really pleasing result and uh, and sort of just encourage you to have a go and have fun. And remembering it's not a competition. We're not trying to win any art award. We're not going in for the Turner Prize. We're not... Um, excuse me, I've got to blow my nose. Um, we're not... You know, we're not competing with each other. We're a team. We should be encouraging and helping each other. And so that's how I see things. I'm going to use the banana now to just do a little bit darker in the middle. Again, I'm still going to be quite gentle because it is a very bright colour. There we go. Just Now, I'm sort of a bit nervous about the next bit because I'm going to do a reverse. So on this bit I'm going to start with the yellow. Now I don't want the yellow to be overtake the whole thing so uh, I hope that that is okay. You know, I'm not, I'm zoomed out but I hope it's okay. So oh gosh there's an alarm ringing I can hear. So I'm going to just put a few layers on the outside and less as I go out. So basically going up and down and then out a bit, up and down and out. It's really simple. We've not got a very large area and um, I don't want it to be too yellow and blending yellow can be a little bit tricky doing it first. So I'm a little bit nervous because I find that a little bit hard but we'll see. I'm just going for it. I'm trying to, doing a video um, increases my confidence because I have to just go for it and uh, it's fun. I like chatting to you. So uh, that's great. So Now when you do your second one you could do him in the reverse. So you could do the face with the yellow on the outside and the red and the yeah, pink in the middle. You know, reverse it if you want to or keep them symmetrical. Now Personally, I have a bit of a problem with non-symmetrical pictures. If it's meant to be symmetrical, I want to make it symmetrical. It's just a personal choice. I look at other people who do pictures that are drawn symmetrically and they colour them differently. And I have so much admiration for them. Pictures look amazing. My brain just won't let me do it. So mine will be symmetrical, I'm sure. But uh, yours doesn't have to be. You can even do your other one a completely different colour. You know, go for blues and greens, um, browns and reds. Um, what other colour combos? Might I do purples and pinks? You know, there's lots of things you could do. But uh, as I say, mine will be the same, I'm sure. But uh, I won't be doing um, the other one on camera because it will be the same for me. So uh, I shall just. Uh, copy it or try and remember. I don't re-watch my own videos to find out what I did. I just try and remember. But uh, you can always follow along again. You know, watch the video again and uh, and colour. There's that um, 
possibility. Oh, I nearly coloured over that line. Um, we have the greenery here as well in the background, and I'm thinking about that a little bit. I'm not sure whether I'll colour that on camera or not, but I'm just definitely going to do it green because I think it will work well with these colours. I think I'm not going to take the yellow around there. That's quite thin. I think there's some of it is hidden under here, so I think the yellow bit would be hidden. I hope you can see what I mean. And now we're going to move on to the toadstool. Now you notice my pencils aren't particularly sharp. They don't really need to be for this because I'm trying to go gently as well. And if you're quite, if you've got a sharper pencil, it does push into the um, page a little harder and it's more vibrant. So it can be extremely useful having a sharp pencil if you want a really vibrant image. But here I'm trying to build up layers gently. Whoops which I didn't do there. I'm just going to erase that. That doesn't look very good. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm just going to take it back because it's quite a... That's better. It's a bit too dark. I may want it to go that dark later, but I don't want... It's easier to try and keep it even. And you see I'm holding my pencil quite far along and on its side, and that allows me to have an even um, lighter colour. Oh, that's a bit dark too. I think it'll be okay. Now, you could, as I said, you know, I was talking about using a gel pen to do um, some of this. You could also, I'm going back now on the other side, you could also um, potentially use a fine liner and just go over all these lines with the fine liner, um, maybe in the colour of the, that you've coloured it, which would be quite tricky because you'd have to keep changing colour. You know, that's an idea. Or you could shade up against here using, hmm, what would I use, um, potentially hmm, maybe a foxy brown black, not really black, I don't think so, I'm too pale for black, something like that, that's another possibility, um, but as I say, this is going to stay quite simple, I think the colours are coming out just as I had hoped which is good. It's quite difficult for me because I can't visualise, as um, people who've watched me a lot will know, so I can't see in my head what I think it's going to look like at the end. What was really interesting was my husband was watching a programme. I'm going to do the cyanide pink in the middle and then come back. It's very pale. Um, darken it up after. Um, my husband was watching a TV pro um maybe been YouTube, I don't know, anyway. And it was about people who do um, video game cartoons sort of thing. And um, I'm trying to make this as dark as this now. It, it's taking a bit of confidence. And anyway, a lot of them apparently can't visualise um, things, so they have to just draw them to see what they're going to look like. Um, so that's quite interesting. There's adv many advantages to not being able to visualise, which is, I think. Um, I didn't even know that it was a thing that people could until I was quite old, maybe only sort of four or five years ago. I um, assumed that everybody, I mean, I find it easier to visualise, I can see some things, I'm not totally, um, totally without that ability. But I can't see faces at all. So if I, in my head, try and imagine the face of my husband or my child, I can see like the outline of their, um, they, I'm only doing a little bit down here, I can see sort of the vague outline of their head or whatever, I can see their hair, I cannot see a little bit, I know there's sort of a, say my son that's here today, I can see that he's got brown hair. But I cannot, um, so I'm using Toadstool again to just darken up around the edge of this pink. Sort of blend it into the yellow. Um, I can see, you know, his brown hair. But I cannot um, see his face at all. I can recognise him if I see him. Which I know some people have prosopagnosia, which is a condition where you cannot um, see faces. At, um, you cannot recognise people's faces if you see someone. You just can't see their features you can't the brain can't process it so you can't see their face at all so you can maybe see their hat head hat hair 
that sort of thing to recognise them or you might use their voice, their clothes as a cue or context but that would be, uh, I haven't got that thankfully I mean I guess people adapt, I know someone who has it and I, have, I, um, I haven't seen her for a long time but um, she used to, uh, she didn't tell me for a while and I used to see her um, at her house and things like that or communicate mainly actually by email so um, it wasn't an issue but um, she did eventually say to me look if I see you in town in the post office or whatever make sure you tell me who you are because I won't necessarily recognise you which was fascinating and uh, I knew about prosopagnosia already um, having done a um, degree in psychology although we didn't study it specifically I uh, I did some further reading and found an interesting book on it. Um, I think it is Oliver Sacks. Um, I'm going to go in quite dark with the yellow now. The uh, man who mistook his wife for a hat. It's quite a. It's written in quite an amusing way. Um, there are lots of stories of people with different conditions. Some are not quite so. Uh, you know, some a bit nasty, I suppose. But um, basically, um, she used to always wear the same hat so that he knew who she was when they were out and about. You can imagine if you were in a shop or something and you split up to go and look at something or other. He didn't know who she was. But she put her hat on the hat stand at home and he thought that she was the hat stand. And, uh, yeah, it was written in quite an amusing way. It was okay. They were okay with it. But fortunately, yeah, I haven't got it that badly. But uh, yeah, it means that I can't decide, I haven't thought about what this picture is going to look like when I'm done, because I can't. So it's a surprise to me as it is to you, which I think is uh, really good, actually. It means that I can never be disappointed. I can never say this didn't turn out as I imagined, because I didn't imagine. So uh, it it's, I think it has its advantages in that sense. You know, it means that if I want to, I can't draw from my imagination because I can't see what I want to draw. But it means, I think, that it makes me a better observer when I'm, I mean, like real. You know, if she said, oh, draw, draw a self-portrait now without a mirror. <laughs> no, <laughs> I couldn't possibly. But it means that if you are trying to copy something when you're colouring, I don't do drawing, but... You have to be really observant because you can't guess. I'm just going to go back in with the toe saw and try and get that transition between those two a bit more to find. Uh, you just can't guess. So you have to look. So it makes you more, as I say, more observant. You can come up with a, oops, a more um, realistic sort of thing, I think. So there was the advantage. I like to see advantages in life and you think wow if that's the only thing that didn't quite work in my head <laughs> that's brilliant you know I'm really lucky yeah I'm, I'm uh, I as I say I am really lucky and look my um it was quite interesting you know my my sister's got children um three two or three of them have autism makes it really hard for her and them and uh, so I just feel really lucky that what I've got doesn't affect me and she's quite my sister can do it now it's just really interesting she we're identical twins but she can visualize in her head and I can't which is fascinating now there's been no um I did have a uh hit my head quite hard once um, which obviously can cause problems but I think if that had made that happen and I suddenly couldn't do that anymore I would have noticed if that makes sense I'm just going to go back in with the cyanide pink now you know if I could visualize before and it suddenly went away I think I would notice yeah I, when I was at primary school we were doing um, forward rolls in the playground and there was a mat and I put my head down really hard and I missed the mat and I whacked it on the tarmac of the playground and it was my tongue went all weird just for a few minutes it felt like it was sort of um, tilted so it's hard to describe and uh, I sort of often wonder what damage I did 
but um, I think I'm fine. <laughs> I think I'm just as mad as I always was. Now we have the little fins to do. I'll always zoom in for this so that you can see. And uh, we've been colouring quite a while. I'm going to finish with these, but uh, I think I might do a second video to show you the plants because I think that would be quite useful for you. So I'm going to start with the pink on these and go in fairly dark actually. I'm feeling a bit more confident with these colours and how well they're mixing up together. Now I'm wondering whether to just go pink to toadstool to yellow on this and do it a little bit differently or whether to do... yeah I think I'm going to do that, just a bit different. So I'm just going to fade this out quite a long way like that and then take the toadstool colour and uh, fade that out. I think as we've only used the spider set, even though I've got my cobra ones here, I think we'll just use the spider set for the plants as well. And then if you've only got the spider set, it'll be much easier to sort of follow along um, banana. And uh, it may just um, sort of make a bit more sense. This one's quite dark. I think I'm going to go back in with that toadstool. Just darken up that. There we go. Yeah, I'm happy with him. Let's zoom out so you can see. Whoop, the camera's nice and slowly for you so that you don't get uh, so you don't get uh, seasick there's a special um, feature on the camera so it doesn't zoom in too quickly so there he is as I say I'm going to do a second video just showing the greenery it might be a bit shorter because there isn't so much and I might do some of it the same but I just think it might be useful just to think about what colours to do and things like that so thank you for watching this one I um, hope you have a fantastic day and happy colouring.